All right, so can we start, Mariana? Sure. Let me present you. So, <laughs> uh, good afternoon, everybody. So, it's my pleasure to introduce Mariana Huskiki from uh, MIT, who's going to speak about Los Angeles tilings in, on a cylinder. Mariana? Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, this talk is based on joint paper with Andrew Ann and Roger Van Pesky, and I'm going to tell you about lozenge tilings on a cylinder or cylinder partitions. So uh, let me start with definition on partitions. First of all, what is an ordinary partition? Ordinary partition is a sequence of um, non-increasing, non-negative integers with a finite amount of coordinates which are non-zero. And uh, this is a, a a very useful combinatorial object uh, used a lot in physics and mathematics. For example, one can, uh, uh, a ordinary partition can uh, record the state of some random growth process. And uh, <clears throat> ordinary partitions, uh, there are many ways to depict them and the most uh, common and used one is uh, Young diagram. Uh, so here is an example of ordinary partition. So we have some integers which are not increasing. And here is a young diagram of this uh, partition. So how to think about this uh, geometric representation, we can think about stack of uh, unit squares in the corner, um, such that the squares are drawn in a convex manner. Or in other words, the boundary has this shape of like stairs like. And it is known that uh, ordinary partitions are in bijection with Young diagrams. So instead of one of those two objects, one can think about another one. Uh, now, before we jump to the cylindric partitions, let me first give you a definition of a plane partition. So a uh, plane partition is a way of uh, filling the boxes of the square grid in quarter plane uh, in such a way that uh, uh, with, with uh, non-negative uh, integers, in such a way that if we uh, move away to the infinity in the directions of uh, the square grid, then those entries do not increase. And also the total number of non-zero entries is finite. Um, hope it's clear from this example, what is a plane partition and one can, uh, there is a very nice uh, interpretation similar to the one which we saw for ordinary partitions with a stack of cubes in empty room. So one can think about the plane partition as a collection of, um, as a finite collection, as a collection of the finite number of unit cubes uh, stacked in uh, empty room, in, uh, in the corner of infinite empty room in a convex manner. So um, here is our empty room and the entries of um, partition are simply height of corresponding stack of cubes. So we just consider the corresponding square on the floor of our empty room and put the stack of cubes with the height corresponding to the uh, entry of the plane partition. Uh, okay, so uh, also from, from, from this picture, one can see that instead of a plane partition, one can think about uh, tilings uh, of the triangular lattice by lozenges of three types. Here are all these three types. Um, in such a way that uh, in each two pi over three quadrant, uh, all but finitely many 
lozenges are of one of these three types. So for example, uh, in this part, almost all lozenges will be of this type. Or in other words, those uh, we are interested in uh, uh, lozenge styling configurations that differ from empty room configuration by a finite number of lozenges. Uh, now that uh, one can also think about, one can also consider uh, a jagged wall with a several number of corners, which corners which correspond to a plane partition in the uh, some domain like this, which is simply a water plane with some squares in the corner removed from from the domain. Okay, now finally, what is a cylindric partition, the object which we're interested in today? So the cylindric partition uh, is a way of uh, filling uh, boxes of the square grid uh, wrapped around a half cylinder. So here is a cutted cylinder. If we think about cylinder itself, then the picture will be something like this. Here is our square grid, which wrapped around the cylinder. And uh, uh, again, uh, we want to fill these uh, boxes with non-zero, uh, non-negative integers, such that um, in the uh, directions of the square grid, when we move away from the border of the cylinder, the entries do not increase. And also we ask that the total uh, number of non-zero uh, entries is finite. Okay. Um, here we also have this uh, interpretation with a stack of boxes uh, in the corresponding empty room. So here is uh, empty room configurations in this case. And clearly we can uh, construct uh, starting from uh, from a cylinder partition, this configuration with uh, unit cubes. Um, if you want to think about a cylinder itself instead of a uh, cutted one, like here, I actually can think about empty room as a uh, half strip shape room which is infinite in this direction. And we just add that the height of uh, stacks of boxes uh, with the same uh, vertical coordinates or like coordinates in this direction, they have the same uh, height. Um, uh, Mariana, yeah. there is a question from Milton Hara in the chat. Um, is there a concept of a twisted styling or diagram in the cylindrical topology? Uh, what do you mean by twisted tiling? Milton, maybe you can open your microphone. Yeah, hi. Hey, so yes, uh, it's, um, so since you, have, since you have this cylindrical um, topology, maybe if you shift a little bit the way on which you uh, complete the, the, the cylindrical diagram it, it, in some in, 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 in Markov chains, I mean, like in random works and things like that, sometimes uh, it, it happens that uh, the, the random work uh, wraps around the, the, the cylinder when it gets a, uh, one turn and makes the topology slightly different. So, so it's uh, in that sense, I was thinking, of, of course, the, the the, the, the extremal case is the Moebius band, you know, where you just twist everything completely the, the cylinder, but there are other possibilities too. So uh, I don't know if uh, this is um, there is an issue of, of this type of uh, situations in these uh, diagrams. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to give answer for your question, but uh, if you if if I got correctly, you are asking about. Uh, tilings of 
like loss and stylings of, 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 of a cylinder. A am I correct? Or you're talking about some other type of diagrams? I, I don't know. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's just that the, when you have the random wall, for example, if you, if, you, if you flip a little bit the, the lattice, you get uh, something slightly different, which is not exactly the, the, the cylindrical topology. And that makes uh, may cause uh, some difference in the in the um, in the dynamics of the of, of the random walk. Uh, but here there is no random walk, but still there, there could be some um, something like that. I don't know. Okay, uh, I see. So uh, I guess that what you mean is that like what happened if instead of uh, this type of boundary, which is kind of uh, perpendicular to the cylinder, I will think about boundary something like this, but with a, a periodic uh, boundary conditions. So then we will have, uh, instead of uh, this kind of cylinder, there will be something like, you know, it's not, uh, the, the boundary is not orthogonal to the cylinder itself anymore. So one can consider such a boundary conditions, but uh, there will be, one should expect the same behavior as I will discuss uh, later, but this is not studied yet. I, I, I hope that this answers your question. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Now uh, about uh, this uh, empty room or 3D version of cylindric partition, Instead of uh, empty room of this shape with an infinite half strip, one can indeed deal with something which is much closer to the cylinder. So like how to think about this uh, stack of cubes, you can think about uh, infinite top hat, which infinite like in both directions. And uh, we can think about this uh, stack of cubes in a convex manner around the uh, head. And now uh, the question, uh, recall that in the case of uh, plane partitions, uh, we said that they are in bijection with loss and tilings with some fixed boundary conditions at the infinity. Uh, is it true that cylindric partitions are also in bijection with uh, loss and tilings of the cylinder with some boundary conditions fixed at the infinity. So first of all, what, what are the natural boundary conditions for the Lozenge tiling in, in this case? Um, so uh, we ask uh, uh, all lozenges if we go uh, far down to be horizontal. So everywhere, if you go to the minus infinity, all lozenges are horizontal. And if we go far up, then uh, we ask that, uh, uh, lozenges are alternate between uh, these two types. So the picture far up looks like, like this. It's like frozen and, and looks like this. So this is our uh, boundary conditions. Or in other words, uh, it's the same as to say that, okay, we're interested in lozenge stylings of uh, infinite cylinder, uh, with, uh, uh, which, which differ by a finite number of lozenges from uh, empty room configuration. And the question is whether uh, these two uh, sets are in bijection or not. Uh, recall that both uh, in, in the plane partition case, it, it was a bijection, but uh, here, nope, this is not true. And uh, uh, so uh, we have starting right now two different setups. First is when we deal with uh, cylindric partitions. And the second one is when we have uh, tilings of a uh, cylinder with uh, these fixed boundary conditions. And uh, I will show in a minute that actually this set, this class is larger than, th than this one. And uh, we will have two different uh, measures supported on these uh, sets. Uh, but before uh, I... Uh, explain you what's, what's the problem in the cylinder case. I said that I want to deal with some measure on those, uh, uh, on those sets. So what do we mean by uh, random tiling or random partition? 
and let us go back to the plane partition case for a minute because there we know that they are in bijection partitions and uh, Plosen tilings. So I can think about a random measure on uh, tilings to define a random measure on partitions. And uh, assume that we deal with a finite, uh, finite case. So we're looking at Lozenge tilings of a hexagon, which correspond to a plane partitions of uh, the rectangle with uh, entries which are bounded by uh, the height of our hexagon. And a very natural measure uh, to define is to say that, okay, let us think that all lozenge configurations are equally weighted to deal with uniform uh, measure. So uh, the probability of this uh, concrete uh, lozenge tiling is one over the number of all tilings of this hexagon. Uh, another very natural uh, way to define the measure on uh, uh, tilings or partitions uh, in terms of uh, uh, this interpretation with uh, stack of cubes is to set the probability of uh, given tiling to be proportional to the Q, which is some fixed parameter between zero and one. Uh, to be proportional to Q to its volume. So uh, where the volume is computed if we use this interpretation with stack of boxes. So for example, uh, on uh, this picture, what is the volume? So we have one cube in each of these columns. Here we have two, 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 three, and five. So the volume here is five plus three plus three times two plus five times one, which is 19. So the probability of this configuration is proportional to Q to the 19. And uh, note that um, using uh, this, this Q, Q to the volume measure makes sense even if we think about um, infinite number of all uh, plane partitions. So we can we can define Q to the volume measure on plane partitions, even in the infinite case, we don't need to deal with the finite case, which is not true for the uniform measure. Okay. Uh, so, and today actually, we're going to deal with Q to the volume measure for the cylinder. I will say a word about it uh, just now actually. Okay, so uh, let us consider these two tilings, where the second one, tilings of the infinite uh, cylinder, so everything, if we go down, like just uh, frozen with uh, horizontal uh, lozenges, and here lozenges alternate between two other types. And uh, the uh, second tiling obtained from the first one simply by uh, shifting of the whole picture by one down. So we just shift the whole picture uh, down by one and we, we, we see the, the second one. Uh, know that every uh, lozenge tilings with, with our boundary condition can be seen as a stack of cubes in some empty rooms. But uh, the empty rooms are different. So know that we can, starting from any lozenge tiling by removing uh, some unit cubes, one can get some empty room configuration. But the empty room configurations are different uh, for example, for these two lozenges, we get these two empty room configurations, and these two empty room configurations cannot be obtained one from another by adding or removing unique cubes. So they are different and they cannot be obtained by uh, this uh, uh, operation. And uh, these two uh, Lodenstalic configurations correspond to the same cylindric partition. 
and they differ by some additional shift only. So it is natural to think about pairs of cylindric partitions together with some integer valued vertical shift. And I claim that uh, lozenge styling configurations with our boundary conditions uh, are in bijection with the pairs of cylindric partitions and vertical shift. So uh, we have two different setups. One is when we deal with random uh, cylindric partition. And another one is where we deal with random lozenge styling on the cylinder with uh, our boundary conditions. And uh, the second uh, setup can be seen as a pairs of cylindric partition and some independent uh, integer valued uh, vertical shift. Uh, okay, so uh, in the first case, it is natural to consider Q to the volume, Q to the volume measure supported on the set of cylindric partitions. And uh, also there is a so-called shift mix Q to the volume measure, which is supported on pairs of uh, independently distributed cylindric partition and in, uh, integer valued random variable, or as I explained, you can also think that this is just a probability measure on the set of lozenge stylings with boundary conditions fixed at, 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 the, at the infinity. Um, I will say a few more words about what is this measure and how to think about it and how we choose uh, the distribution for this uh, integer valued random variable. But for now, I just want you to 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 remember that there are two different setups. One is when we deal just with a cylindric partition, and another one if we deal with shifted cylindric partitions, which is equivalent to lozenge stylings with uh, boundary conditions fixed at the infinity, as we discussed. Mariana, just a question yeah. maybe I missed. Uh, what's the uh, n there in the, in the formula for probability of uh, lambda s? Okay, yeah, uh, so uh, you didn't miss it because I didn't say. So this is just, we have two n columns of uh, triangles in e for, for our, this is parameter of the width of the cylinder. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so yeah, like here n is equal five, we have 10 columns of, um, and, and S can be uh, negative or positive, like you can shift up or, and down. Yeah, or, absolutely. Or. We can shift in both directions. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, and we want to study the height function in these two setups. So what is the height function? Um, in the case of uh, um, cylindric partitions, uh, the height function is simply the height of the stack of boxes, or in other words, so know that uh, cylindric partitions, this is just some uh, set of uh, lozenge stylings which correspond to the fixed empty room. Uh, instead of all lozenge stylings, we just restrict to uh, lozenge stylings which correspond to our fixed empty room which we fix uh, to deal with uh, cylindric partitions. So the height function is an integer valued uh, function defined on vertices of, uh, of the uh, lozenge styling, uh, which is defined by fixing a value at uh, some point and uh, which satisfies these uh, local relations. So given the lozenge styling, uh, one can uh, define a height function on uh, vertices of uh, the tiling and other way around, if one has a height function which satisfies these local relations, then one can reconstruct a lozenge tiling from the values of the height function. And of course, if we want to deal with lozenge tiling with some boundary conditions, we should restrict the height function to have also some boundary conditions which correspond to the boundary conditions of the Bosnian 
So uh, instead of random lozenge styling, one can think about random height function, integer valued height function defined on the uh, vertices of the triangle lattice. Therefore, the key questions in the lozenge styling model concern the large scale behavior of the height function and of its fluctuations. So uh, we're interested in two types of uh, results. First of all, is so-called limit shape result, which describe the behavior of the height function itself and uh, the fluctuations of the height function. And uh, here are the uh, results related to, to, to these two questions. Um, first of all, we computed the limit shape of the uh, normalized height function uh, in both cases for both uh, measures, q to the volume measure and shift mixed q to the volume measure. Uh, let me make a remark here that actually the uh, Limit shape result follows from the earlier paper by Borodin, where he showed the uh, local uh, statistics for the uh, height function. So our only input here is showing the concentration. Um, and uh, which is really new and which wasn't studied before. Uh, people didn't study uh, the fluctuations of the height function on, on, on the cylinder. Uh, is uh, so he, here are the results. First of all, we show that in the case of uh, Q to the volume measure, or when we deal with cylindric partitions, the fluctuations of the height function converges uh, converge to the Gaussian free field in uh, uh, some uh, complex structure, so called. Kenyan and Kulikov complex structure, but for now, okay, we just prove the convergence of fluctuations to some nice uh, limiting object. And uh, in the case of shift mid Q to the volume uh, measure, so when we deal with uh, lozenge tailings with fixed boundary conditions, the fluctuations converges uh, again to the um, Gaussian prefield uh, in the uh, Kenyan and Kulikov. Uh, conformal structure, but in addition, uh, we have here the uh, discrete Gaussian shift. So in the case of uh, the height function for lozenge styling, the fluctuations of the height function converges to the Gaussian free field uh, in Kenyan Kulikov con conformal structure with a discrete Gaussian shift. And uh, the goal for the rest of the talk is to clarify the statement of statements of these two theorems. So don't worry, I will explain what is Gaussian free field, what is Kenyan Kulikov complex structure, and we'll give a more precise definition of, of, of the model. Um, okay. Uh, before we also, jump. Mariana, will you also explain what's the liquid region? Sorry? Uh, will you also explain what's the liquid region? Yes, I will. Okay, good. Uh, I, I think we have another question from Milton. Uh, are these Gaussians independent? Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. So before we jump to the uh, limit shape of the height function and the fluctuations uh, result for the height function, uh, let us consider this toy model, which can be seen as a one-dimensional version of the height function. So let us think about simple random walk. Um, so simple random walk uh, started, Started at zero and uh, conditioned to uh, end at x, um, or in other words, one can think about uniform measure on this uh, up-down path from zero zero to t x, and uh, it is known that as x at t goes to infinity in such a way that the slope. Uh, 
uh, remains to be constant, then um, uh, the random work converges to the uh, straight line between these two points. Or in other words, um, those uh, random paths concentrated around this blue line. Or in other words, I can say that this blue line is indeed the limit shape of the simple random walk. Um, it is also known that uh, uh, the fluctuations in this setup convergence to a standard Browning bridge. And in particular, uh, the covariance computed at uh, two points S and S prime converges to the convariance of the Browning bridge, which is given by uh, Green's function for Laplace operator on uh, 0, 1 interval with zero Dirichlet boundary conditions. OK, uh, this is just a two example to have in mind how to think about limit shape and the fluctuations. And also, we'll see right now that the Gaussian free field can be seen as a two-dimensional version of the Brownian bridge. So um, what is the Gaussian free field, two dimensional Gaussian free field with zero Dirichlet boundary conditions? If you never heard about it before, you can just have in mind uh, this picture, which is actually a, a simulation of a discrete Gaussian free field, which approximates a continuous one, and think that this is simply a two dimensional uh, generalization of a Brownian bridge. Uh, more precisely, a two-dimensional Gaussian free field is a Gaussian process with a covariance kernel given by uh, the Green's function of the Laplacian. Note that um, uh, GFF is not a random function, but uh, a random generalized function or random distribution. So uh, the value uh, and the value at the point is not really defined. Uh, in terms of um, uh, test functions, uh, if you smooth, uh, smooth out the Gaussian free field against the test function, then the covariance functional uh, may be seen as a standard Dirichlet energy of the domain. And uh, the nice property of the Gaussian free field is that it is a conformally invariant object. And, uh, OK, so uh, now we know what is the GFF. And I said that we expect fluctuations to converge to the Gaussian free field in Kenyan Kunkov conformal structure, in some conformal structure. So what is this conformal structure? And also, what is the liquid region? Um, let us consider another well-known example. So let us think about uniform lozenge tilings of uh, a hexagon. And here is a picture how it looked like, how a generic uniform lozenge tiling look like at a large scale. scale. So you can see some uh, limit shape phenomena that the uh, picture close to the corners is somehow frozen. However, inside the so-called Arctic circle, it is uh, uh, pretty chaotic. And uh, the liquid region of the is uh, the domain where the probabilities of all three types of lozenges, the asymptotics of probabilities of all three types of lozenges are non zero. OK, so uh, clearly from this picture, the liquid domain is what is inside this uh, circle. And uh, it is known that uh, in the case of uniform lozenge tilings of the hexagon, the fluctuations of the height function converges to the Gaussian free field, but in new complex structure. So, so one should map this liquid region to, to the unit disk. And there is a precise map how one should do it. And the only thing which you should, which is important right now about this map is that it's not a conformal map. So uh, we get the GFF here, but in new coordinates, in new complex structure. Uh, by the way, this theorem was proved by Leo Petrov. Um, 
So, um, more generally, there is a conjecture by Kenin and Kof that for lozenge stylings, there exists uh, uh, even even th th this conjecture is actually works for any uh, biperiodic uh, planar bipartite uh, dimer model. Uh, but let us deal with the lozenge stylings only for now. So for there there exists uh, some map zeta on a liquid region such that the fluctuations converge to the Gaussian prefield in the conformal structure defined by this uh, in in the coordinate zeta or in the conformal structure defined by by, by this uh, map zeta. So uh, this map. Um, introduces a different conformal structure uh, on a liquid region, which is different uh, from uh, the one inherits from the plane in which it naturally lives. And uh, this uh, map is, can be written in terms of the limit shape of the height function. So, uh, here is a theorem uh, by Kenyon and Okunkov that inside the liquid region, uh, there exists a function which depends on the uh, limit shape of the height function in the following way. And it also, so H is a limit shape of the height function, and it also satisfies some uh, differential equation. And uh, the Conjecture here says that this uh, map Z defines the conformal structure in which fluctuation should converge to the Gaussian free field. So, in the case of the uniform measure, the uh, zeta is simply inside with this map Z. And for the Q to the volume measure, because we deal with this Q to the volume, there is some additional term uh, which is related to the existence of this uh, huge volume setup. OK. So um, here are some known results regarding the limit shape and the convergence of the fluctuations to the Gaussian free field. Um, Con Canyon and Probe, probe uh, showed uh, the convergence of the uh, normalized height function to a certain entropy maximizers for uniform random dominant links. And then Kenyon, Kuinkoff, and Sheffield um, generalize this result for weighted doubly periodic bipartite dimer models. Uh, then uh, Kuinkoff and Roshitikin computed the limit shape for uh, ordinary Q to the volume plane partitions and the convergence of uh, the fluctuations in this setup to the uh, GFF also was shown. Uh, there are also some uh, results uh, related to the dimer model on the uh, square lattice and hexagonal lattice, both for the convergence of the fluctuations to GFF and, uh, and uh, uh, computing the limit shape. Uh, let me maybe emphasize that in this table, this result is the only one which deals with not only doubly periodic uh, weighted bipartite graphs. It works for a more general, general setup. Uh, however, technique introduced here, so far we don't know how to get the limit shape result in, in, in this setup. And uh, another thing which I want to emphasize is that in this table, this is the only one result which deal with non simply connected domains. And we will come to back, uh, come to it uh, later and uh, see how this result is actually, which, which analogies it has with, with our setup. Okay, so today we deal with Q to the volume distributed cylindric partitions and shift mix Q to the volume cylindric partitions. Or in other words, this, this one correspond to uh, lozenge stylings on, on a cylinder. Okay, now finally let me let me define the model. 
Um, as I said, we deal with two different setups, and this model was introduced by Borodin and also studied by Bita and Butia. And uh, there are two different setups, huge is a volume and ship mix is a volume. And the first case, uh, <clears throat> so okay, this is a measure supported on cylindric partitions, and the probability of each cylindric partition is proportional to Q to its volume. And uh, another, um, in the another setup, we deal with shifted cylindric partitions, or which is the same as the Rosen standings of a cylinder with fixed boundary conditions at the infinity. And uh, um, so uh, in, 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 in this paper, Borodin also introduced um, a periodic sure process. And one of the motivations was to, was that uh, it allows to study uh, cylindric partitions in the same way as um, original sure process introduced by Aklinkov and Rishikikin allows to study uh, random plane partitions. And um, Borodin also um, introduced uh, a shift mix QGIS volume measure, uh, where, which is a measure supported on pairs of cylindric partition and vertical shift. So uh, distributed as something like what is written here. Um, and recall that the cylindric partition and this shift are uh, independent. And there are a few different uh, reasonable, uh, like the question is how, how we choose the distribution, how Borodin and why we also deal with the distribution, and why this is a nice distribution for this uh, integer valued uh, random variable. So uh, one of the reasons is that a periodic true process is not determinantal which was true for the uh, original true process. And uh, the point process, this point process, which is naturally associated with uh, cylindric partitions, required a non-trivial um, sheet mixing transformation to be determinantal. So why one of the reasons why it is a good distribution for this shift is that for uh, such a shift, this shift mix periodic sure process became a determin determin uh, became determinant. So it has a determinant structure. Um, another, we, we already explained why it is natural to have a shift because it corresponds to Lozenstein's uh, of a cylinder with uh, boundary conditions and infinity. But uh, it is also known that timer model has a determinant structure. And for this choice of uh, distribution for the shift, uh, one can define a weighted dimer model, which gives the same measure as a shift mix QGIS volume measure, which is another reason. So this, this determinantal structure also can be seen as something which comes from the dimer model. Okay. Um, so, and uh, uh, Bidai and Boutier also studied this, uh, this uh, model introduced by Borodin, and they gave an alternative derivation of the um, correlation kernel formula and also uh, get some other result for the periodic true process. Okay, so, and uh, what we're interested in, we're interested, the main interest of our interest is the fluctuations of the height function, which wasn't studied in these two uh, uh, papers. So note that in both setups, the height function vanishes when we go far, far, far down. And uh, if we go far up, then um, for sufficiently large uh, y coordinates, the height function coincide with y plus s, which, where s is our shift. So uh, recall that we can think about uh, unshifted q to the volume case by setting s to be 0. And you can see that if we say that S is equal to zero, then indeed uh, these two probabilities uh, are the same. Uh, these two measures are the same. Okay, so um, now when we 
finally have all ingredients to describe the statements of uh, the results. Let us go back to the, to the results. So uh, first of all, as I said, we uh, computed the limit shape of uh, normalized height function. And yet again, it actually uh, was already done. It follows from the result which uh, one can find in Brodin's paper. So our only input is a concentration. But what is important for me now is that, uh, OK, we, we, we know uh, what is the uh, limit shape. And it is defined as written here in terms of the derivative. And why I'm actually interested in the derivative is that now that uh, uh, clearly by the construction, our model has the following symmetry. So the uh, probabilities of these two types of lozenges are the same. And then uh, the probability of horizontal uh, lozenges can be uh, written in terms of the height function. And of course, uh, OK, we have a relation like this, uh, which tell us that, uh, so OK, using the limit shape and uh, what is written here about the probabilities of three different types of lozenges, we can ident identify the uh, liquid regime. Uh, region, sorry, liquid region. Yet again, this is a region where all those three probabilities are no, non zero. And uh, now uh, here is a result for the unshifted Q2 volume measure. Uh, so, in the case when we deal with uh, uh, cylindric partitions, uh, the fluctuations converge to the uh, Gaussian free field with zero boundary conditions in the conformal structure conjectured by Kenyon and Oknikov. Uh, and uh, here is the second result. If we choose the shift to be a, a discrete Gaussian, so uh, here is the definition. This is some variable which is distributed like written here. Note that uh, parameters uh, C and M are not uh, exactly the mean and variance as it is for the Gaussians, but they are clearly related to the mean and value, but not, not, not exactly them. And uh, uh, for the uh, shift as distributed as a discrete Gaussian with these parameters, the uh, fluctuations of the height function in the shift miss case converges to the Gaussian free field in kenyan kunkov conformal structure with a Dirichlet shift. And now uh, let me say a few words on um, how the proof works in these two cases. So recall that in shift mix, Q to the volume case, we have a nice determinantal structure. However, we also have a more difficult uh, limit here because in addition to the GFF, we have this discrete Gaussian shift, which is not easy to deal with. For the uh, unshifted case, uh, we don't have the determinantal structure, but the limit is more a uh, simple object, which is just a GFF with zero boundary conditions. And uh, the uh, one of the uh, ways to prove the convergence of the fluctuations to the GFF is to show that uh, scaling limits of uh, all moments of the height function uh, coincide with the scaling limit uh, with the moments for the GFF. And it is enough to say that, OK, when then they are coincide. Uh, and uh, we have nice formulas for the uh, correlation functions in the uh, shift mixed um case uh, because it is a determinantal structure so what we did from this nice formula for the shift mix due to the volume case we did use some formulas for the uh, unshifted case then we proved the convergence in the shifted case uh, to the uh, gaussian free field and from that result knowing this convergence for uh, unshifted one we did use the convergence for the shift mix to the GFF with a discrete Gaussian. 
Um, so anyway, the, the main point is that here we have a nice uh, determinantal structure, but more complicated uh, object for the limit. And the in, in the another case, other way around, we don't have determinant structure, but the limit is much, much easier. Um, now, how much time do I have? I don't. Sorry, I was I was muted. Uh, something like five minutes. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, let me briefly tell you how this this related to the uh, uh, so-called holy hexagon. So let us think about uniform uh, Lozenstellings of a hexagon with a, with a hole. So here is uh, our domain, which has now two parts of the boundary, the inner one and the outer one. And this uh, domain clearly uh, topologically equivalent to the cylinder. And uh, there are uh, two ways to uh, define a random tiling on, on this domain. One is just choose uh, a tiling uniformly randomly. And the second one is one can fix the height function of the boundary. Note that for the simply connected domain, the height on the boundary do not depend on the tiling. And this is the case for the outer one boundary, but not the case for the inner one. And to see this, uh, let us look at these two examples. So those are just two different Lozenge tilings of this domain. And uh, the height function, let's say, on this part of the boundary is equal zero. Here is the same. And on the outer boundary, it does not depend on the tiling. So it always will be zero on this part of the boundary. And let's say here, the height function is always five. But if we now look at the uh, inner boundary, then in the first picture, the height is equal to two. And on the second, the height is equal to three. So there are two natural different setups. One is to think about uh, uniform Lozenge tilings without any restrictions for the height function. And another one is to deal with uh, Lozenge tilings, which have a fixed height function of a hole uh, on, on an inner boundary or a fixed high function of the whole, uh, which is uh, uh, nicely related to our cylinder case. So we can think that when one deal with uh, uh, uniform Lozenge tilings uh, of uh, this domain without any restrictions, then this is just our unrestrictions uh, tilings of a cylinder or shifted case. And uh, the second one, which corresponds to the fixed height function on, on the inner boundary, corresponds to the uh, just simple cylindric partitions when we don't have any shift. Or in other words, the shift is fixed to be zero. And uh, here is a, a result by uh, Alexey Bufedov and Vadim Gorin. So they showed that in the case of the fixed height function uh, on the inner boundary, the fluctuations of the height function for these uniform Lozenge stylings converge to the Gaussian tree field in kenyon Winkov complex structure, which fits very well with the results which we get that for the uh, unshifted Q to the volume uh, measure, the fluctuations also converge to the Gaussian tree field in kenyon Winkov conformal structure. Now, uh, what about uh, uh, the case when we do not force the height uh, of the hole to be fixed when we allow it to vary. So uh, there is no known result for this. However, there is a conjecture uh, made by uh, Vadim that for the uh, case when we do not uh, fix the height of the hole, the limiting fluctuations of the hole are discrete Gaussian with uh, some parameters uh, C and M. And moreover, the C parameter is given in terms of Dirichlet energy uh, using the uh, conformal structure, kenyon Kunkov conformal structure. So where G here is a, a unique uh, harmonic uh, function 
with zero, zero boundary conditions on this domain, on the outer, what is correspond to the outer boundary and one in the inner boundary. And uh, for some domains, this uh, uh, conjecture supposed to be proven. I don't know the details. Uh, this is some paper in preparation. If you're interested, better to ask one of uh, uh, the authors of this paper. And uh, by the way, here is a picture with simulations where uh, one has different height of, of, of a hole. And uh, the natural analog of this uh, uh, hole height is our shift, right? And uh, recall that we deal with the shift distributed as written here, which can be rewritten as exponent, and then equivalently it means that S has S is a discrete uh, Gaussian with those parameters, and uh, this parameter C is exactly the energy uh, which we see in this conjecture. So uh, these two different setups, even though that holy hexagon and cylinder clearly topologically are the same, but if we think about let's say discrete pictures and they are completely different. And uh, so like this is how our results on the cylinder fits with uh, known results by Buffett of Gorin and for this uh, conjecture by Wedding. Thank you for your attention. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, I propose that we open our microphones and thank Mariana. So, um, are there questions? Uh, maybe I ask a quick question myself. Uh, Mariana, in your uh, theorem about the unshifted case, I didn't really understood the role of the parameter Q. Do you change it? Uh, the other one, the unshifted. The, so do, do you change it uh, with N or, or not in this case? Okay, yeah, so uh, we fix some parameter T and mm -hmm. uh, T is simply Q to the N where N is a width of, of a cylinder. This is huh. how we scale. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, ah. So it's the same thing in the in this theorem in the, in the yeah. other one down there. Okay, uh -huh. okay. and uh, so uh, in, in this one it, you you don't have u, but in the sh uh, shifted case you have this extra parameter u that ah so it appears in the in the limit in this yeah. normal discrete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. May I ask a question? Sure. So, um, uh, Tony Lely and Laslier, they, they, they consider some um, dynamics on this uh, on these tilings, right? And uh, they obtain the um, convergence of these fluctuations. In that in that case, they converge to a to, to a stochastic heat equation that has this Gaussian free field as a invariant uh, distribution. And um, so, do you expect uh, something similar to happen here, or there, or there should be some some some, some additional difficulties, so, so, so something additional appear in the in the picture? So I guess that there are some difficulties should appear here because, as I said, like you know, there are two theorems in one we have nice determinantal structure and another we don't. And in one of them, we have just a GFF and another GFF with a discrete Gaussian shift. And uh, they are like, you know, crossed in a different way such that if it's easy to deal with one of them, then it's not easy to deal with another. So I'm not sure, like I, I would not say that this is not true, but I guess that there will be some difficulties to, to prove it because of this. Um, 
dependence on whether we have a determinantal structure or not, and whether we have just GFF or GFF with the Gaussian field, uh, with the Gaussian shift. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Okay, so if not, let's thank Mariana again.